Huh. Our subject today is understanding the scripture or understanding the Bible. The denomination of Christianity has completely lost how to understand or how to divide the Bible doctrines rightly. Because a lot of people know a lot of things from the Bible. And when they start talking about the Bible, they bring all that things what they know from different parts of the Bible, but they do, know how, they do not know how it relates to each other. So what we are going to discuss now and show you from your Bible is how to understand the Word of God. How to rightly divide because not everything is said in the Bible is to us or about us. But all the scripture is God inspired and it is profitable for us. It is recorded for our understanding and our learning. But out of which we have to understand what is the doctrine which is ours. That's what we are going to talk about. In order to understand Bible correctly, you need to understand Jesus Christ's earthly ministry and Jesus Christ's heavenly ministry. Yes, I said one has to understand Jesus Christ's earthly ministry and his heavenly ministry. Now, when Jesus Christ started his earthly ministry, even in spite of the Jews objected it. In Matthew chapter 9 verse 35 says, He and his disciples round about Galilee started preaching the gospel of the kingdom. A lot of denominational Christians who claim to be Christians do not understand the difference between the gospel of the kingdom and the gospel of grace. And as long as we don't understand that, we will be confused. So what Jesus Christ preached was the gospel of the kingdom because he was going to establish the kingdom and he was going to be the king. But the Jews did not accept it and they rejected him and not only rejected him, they killed him. So in Matthew chapter 10 verse 5 and 6 he says, he gathered all his disciples and told them, don't take this gospel, that is the gospel of the kingdom, to the Gentiles. That's in our Bible. Matthew chapter 10, verse 5 and 6. He, 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 it was not a suggestion, it was a commandment. He, he commanded them, do not take the gospel of the kingdom to, Israel, to, to the Gentiles, but take it to the lost sheep of Israel. So, that was the earthly ministry Jesus Christ did. But in course of time, the Jews grew very uh, dissatisfied with him. He, they did not approve him, his lordship or his kingship, and they finally crucified him. They handed him over to the Gentile uh, Roman Empire, and they crucified him. And... The God of this world, Lucifer, who is behind this whole program, because Lucifer has, has tried not to take place Christ's birth even. And we can see that through the whole Bible, several, several incidents. Now, when he was crucified, the devil believed that he got rid of Jesus Christ. And he was very happy. He actually celebrated. But... On the third day, he rose again from the grave and he appeared to his disciples. He rose again from the grave and appeared to his disciples. Now, Jesus Christ, after 40 days after resurrection, ascended to heaven. And Peter tells us that he will be there for 2,000 years. Now, when you follow the Bible carefully and intelligently, you will see that 
Jesus Christ rose from the dead and he appeared to his disciples and he commissioned them to continue the same gospel to be preached to the Jews. And even if, if you want to go so far, he even said, take it to the entire world. And, but did the Jews obey what he commanded them? Take, did the gospel go throughout the whole world? No. Acts chapter 11 verse 19 says, yeah, they preached the gospel, but they preached only to the Jews. That's in your Bible. Acts chapter 11 verse 19. It says that they preached only to the Jews. Now, when Jesus Christ ascended, he was about to go, they commanded him to take this gospel across the world and he gave him special powers, healing powers. And he, he asked them to continue the ministry that he had with them. And he left. And there was a big persecution for the people who took Jesus' name even among the Jews. Now, the Jews who believed or known as Christians are the Jews who worship God in temple, obey the law, and listen to this point very, uh, very clearly and carefully. Because those Jews who believe Jesus Christ is the Messiah, they are the one who are saved. The, the point that Jesus Christ tried to make it across to the Jewish people was, he is the Messiah. But they did not accept it, they did not understand it, and he ascended to heaven. Now, all of a sudden, there was a, a man's name mentioned, Saul of Tarsus, and you can see that in chapter 8 of book of Acts, and then in detail, he appears on chapter in chapter 9 of book of Acts. In book of Acts chapter 9, a tremendous uh, new thing happens and that is Saul of Tarsus is a very highly educated, intelligent Jewish Pharisee and who was a member of the Sanhedrin, the ruling party of the Jews and he took Jesus' ministry as an offense. He said, why do we need Jesus of Nazareth? Because we have Abraham our father, we have Moses who gave us the law, we have the law, we have the temple, why do we need Jesus of Nazareth? He's an impersonator, he's a liar. So he decided in his life that he is going to do anything possible in his life to get rid of his followers and do not let the religion of Christianity propagate. So what did he do? On ninth chapter of book of Acts, he had a, a group of people traveling to Syria because there were a lot of uh, Jews dispersed because of the persecution from Roman government at that time. And he was going to go there, arrest them, bring them back, torture them, and put them to death. And he has the permission from the high priest to do that. All the way through Damascus, almost he reached the city of Damascus, Jesus Christ appeared in person to Saul of Tarsus. First he saw a, a very bright uh, light shined about him, and he became blind because of the bright light. And then Jesus Christ called Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? This is the ninth chapter of the book of Acts. But Saul is a very educated man and he understood there is something wrong. Understanding the situation, he asked the person who asked him, why are you persecuting? Saul or Tarsus asked Jesus, who are you? And Jesus uh, replied to that question, who are you? He said, I am Jesus whom you persecute. And it is not a good idea to kick against the nails, bricks, because it will hurt you. And then the next question that Saul had was, what shall I do? What do you want me to do? 
and Jesus told Saul, go to Damascus where your destination is and we will uh, tell you what to do there. And in the meantime, Jesus appeared to Ananias, God appeared to Ananias in a, in a vision and told to go and take care of uh, Saul of Tarsus. Well, it was a little difficult uh, situation for Ananias to believe what God is saying, but God said in ninth chapter, he said, chosen vessel to take my name to the Jews, to the Romans, and to the Gentiles. These are the three assignments that God gave to Paul in chapter 9 of the book of Acts. From then onwards, what we see is Saul of Tarsus comes in, in action according to his assignments. First, after he was healed and he had food and he got his vision back, he asked Ananias, is there any synagogue close by here? And he went to the close by synagogue and he told the Jews who were assembled there that Jesus Christ whom you crucified is the Messiah. They did not like that idea and they got so uh, uh, upset and they wanted to kill him. And then he did. His first ministry was to the Jews. And then, of course, he was arrested and he was in Roman jail and Roman uh, soldiers who kept watch on him every shift. They all heard the gospel and they got saved. The gospel of salvation that Jesus Christ gave to Paul. Unless we understand the difference between what gospel was given to Paul, other than what gospel was uh, Peter preaching on the day of Pentecost, you will be a confused Christian in, 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 the, in the biblical doctrine. So, let's make it very clear. Jesus Christ was born during the dispensation of law. Jesus Christ grew up during the dispensation of law. Jesus Christ started his ministry during the dispensation of law. Jesus Christ was crucified during the dispensation of law. Jesus Christ was buried and he rose again during the dispensation of law. And he ascended during the dispensation of law. We have to learn this. And then, Paul started preaching the gospel of grace that Jesus Christ told him. What is the difference between uh, Peter's gospel, that is the gospel of the kingdom, and Paul's gospel, which is gospel of grace. What is the difference? You will find that Paul's gospel in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 through 4, which says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel. Now, we have a small problem all across America is, they will read that, uh, I declare unto you the gospel. That is not. The emphasis is, I declare unto you the gospel. That is English language. That I was taught when I was in grammar school, way, way early in life. That is, when you put a definite article before a noun, that becomes an imperative clause and there is no other gospel. That is what Paul was telling in his gospel to the Corinthians, that I declare unto you the gospel and there is no other gospel which you heard and which you believed and where you stand unless you believe you do not believe and then he says the gospel is Jesus Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and he was buried and he rose again on the third day according to the scripture this is the scripture for salvation during the dispensation of grace and outside this there is no gospel for salvation Peter's gospel will not save one uh, human being during the dispensation of grace because Peter's gospel will come back when Jesus comes back in 2029 to establish the kingdom the whole uh, uh, gospel that Peter preached in the day of Pentecost that is repent of your sins and be baptized and Paul did not say that Paul said I preach to you the gospel the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. We have to understand the difference of that. The gospel of salvation during the dispensation of grace is the finished work of 
Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. We not, there is nothing that we have to do. He did all what we need to do to be saved. So, the difference between, or understanding the, the, the difference between the two Gospels, Gospel of the Kingdom and Gospel of the Grace, or Paul's Gospel, are two different things. So, I want to bring it to you very clearly. If you don't understand this, you don't understand Bible, you will be a confused Christian thinking that you are a Christian, but nobody is saved outside Paul's Gospel. Well, Brother Thomas, is that your opinion? No. Open your Bible to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3 and 4. That is 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 3 and 4, which says, if our Paul writing, if our gospel is hid, it is hid to them that are lost. In plainer English, what that says is, if our Paul's gospel is hidden to somebody, it is hidden to the people who have never been saved. And then the next word says, because the God of this world has blinded their mind that they will not see the glorious gospel and be saved. This is the ultimate uh, understanding of the, uh, the dispensation of grace and how to divide the biblical doctrine and especially the doctrine of salvation. Let me conclude my uh, subject here. There is no salvation outside Paul's gospel during the dispensation of grace. When the body of Christ will be raptured from here, those who believe Paul's gospel will be the members of the body of Christ which is the New Testament church and they'll be raptured in the next four years. Thank you.